This, this Power, Power Rangers, Rangers comic book review, review is created for and intended for an adult audience. Jason wants a group study session for, I may as well stop. The mouse just stopped working. <sighs> Hello there, heroes. I'm the Orange Ranger, and welcome to another comically long review. The comics just don't stop. They just keep coming out week after week after week. Just week after week of comics and pages and artists and, and paper cuts and drawings. And it just, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It's... <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. I am, of course, thrilled with all of this Power Rangers comic content. Three Power Rangers comics a month for the next five months, including this one. At certain points in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Power Rangers review, I may have said that it was a six-issue miniseries. It's actually only five, so sorry about that. But three Power Rangers comics a month for the next five months. And due to scheduling quirks with the holidays, we are on the third straight week out of four with Power Rangers comics. We are back to just the Rangers this month. The Turtles are going to have to wait until January. Tommy has been sent somewhere to get new ranger powers, and Jason and the Blue Emissary have been caught in the command center looking all shady. Let's see how all that bears out by taking a look at GoGo -Go Power Rangers issue number 26. The main cover is nice. There's nothing wrong with it. Stylized artistic rangers without their helmets, separated from an unmorphed Tommy by Saba. Good visual image that Saba is what stands between Tommy and being a ranger. Kimberly's yearbook photo with a typical Valley Girl quote. Another album cover I had to look up, but I did find it easier this time by searching for the artist and the issue. This cover homages the Oasis album, Definitely Maybe. I like how Tommy is only seen on a piece of artwork there. It's a nice touch. Billy's social media cover was prompted by Kimberly, and now Kimberly's has Billy in it, the two working on a submission to the Promethea Project. Jason wants a group study session for midterms, and interestingly enough, Aisha responds, asking to meet halfway from Stone Canyon, indicating that the groups knew each other for a bit. Warm up the TARDIS, folks. We are right back to the time travel. This issue starts seven months after Arrival Day, with Rita and Tommy having dinner in her palace. Rita tests Tommy, saying the food is good, to which he agrees, and then that it's bad, to which he also agrees. When she doubles back, he can't figure out what she wants, so just defaults to being her servant. She destroys the table in a rage. She tells Tommy that she envisioned gaining a partner, a champion, when she finally used the dragon power coin. Minor nitpick here, Rita calls it the green power coin, but I really don't like addressing the coins by their colors because they're not actually their colors. The dragon power coin isn't green, it's gold, like all the other ones, but that's a nitpick. Instead, she had to use a spell and ended up with just another mindless slave. Tommy pours her an appropriately green drink and says he knows he is under a spell, but insists that he's loyal to her anyway. His entire life he feared what he could become and thus held back, but Rita freed him from that, making him the fearsome warrior that he is now. He pledges eternal loyalty and begs her to enjoy the moment. Present day on planet somewhere, see, I meant it, Tommy gets dumped out of the portal. He calls Zordon and Alpha, who don't answer, but he keeps transmitting anyway. He encounters a white tiger who turns as if leading Tommy somewhere, so Tommy says he'll follow. After a while wandering through the jungle, they find an ornate white and gold temple. Tommy climbs it, despite it seeming to have two front doors, and enters to find a big glowing power coin in a ball of white light. He starts to say that this was easier than he figured it was going to be, but then some lightning steps him back. It's Saba! Not so happy to see Tommy saying he'll vaporize him. Tommy sure is happy to see Saba, especially restored to one piece. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the ah! did you just say? Um, what? So, Tommy remembers Saba. Tommy remembers Lord Draken 
breaking Saba. My question is, why? None of this makes sense. None of that stuff actually happened, right? The Rangers reset history. This is all very confusing. Anyway, this actually isn't Saba. At least he says he's not Saba. That Saba, so maybe it is Saba, was from Draken's world. At least I think he says another world, whatever. This is the Sword of the Light. Not to be confused with the Sword of Light, of course. That name is just adding to the confusion. Tommy explains that Zordon sent him to get a power source that will make him a ranger again. Saab, uh, the sword, says, okay, if you can get past me, you can have the white light. Tommy says that's fine, he's pretty fast, but so is the sword. It starts beating Tommy around, saying being worthy of the white light takes far more than speed and strength. It may take his entire life to earn it. Will he risk that? The sword starts getting a little pedantic, to be honest, but the intent is to make Tommy examine his motives. When Tommy says they need the power because people are in danger, the sword asks if he has to be the one to save them all. Why is he so special? He says he's not, he just wants to save his friends and reclaim his purpose. Reclaim? Do you believe it's your right to be a Power Ranger? Tommy says he wants to prove himself, but the sword says he already has. The sword is well aware of the accomplishments of the Green Ranger, but tells Tommy to look into the light to see his legacy. The power is for someone pure and noble, but another Tommy Oliver became Lord Draken and nearly destroyed reality. Again, why does anybody remember that? The Rangers reset reality. Anyway, Tommy says he's not Draken, that they made two different choices, and Tommy begs the sword for a second chance. The sword tells Tommy the white light is their most powerful weapon. He has been tasked as its protector, and if it were to be corrupted, all would be lost. And we have already seen this to be true in Draken's timeline. The sword has judged Tommy unworthy, and will never just let him take it. You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! Oh yeah, that whole Jason cliffhanger. So this looks really bad. Zordon and Alpha gone and Jason trying to crack into the command center's database. The Emissary says he can knock Zack and Trini out pretty easily and they basically start trash talking each other before Jason steps between them. Jason, however, can't really find a way to sensibly explain what's going on. They didn't have anything to do with where Zordon and Alpha went, except that they kind of did. He starts telling them about the Emissary and Draken, but the Emissary warns that telling them the wrong thing could unravel reality. But Tommy remembers Lord Draken and everything, so what the fracks? This is interrupted by Billy, who reports about having found the hidden room. He doesn't say so, but that was covered in the last issue. He asks them all to meet at his lab. Jason tells them he knows this is confusing, but for now, they need to trust him and keep this to themselves until it settles out. The two of them reluctantly agree. The Sentinel statue wakes up and is itching for a fight, blasting some buildings and counting down until the Rangers arrive. They show up, morphing, and... <laughs> This is something I brought up before seeing it in other issues, and when I saw it in this issue reading it, I actually posted about it on Twitter with a picture and got a little bit of pushback saying that I was overreacting. But you know what? This is my show. These are my opinions. This bugs the crud out of me, so we're gonna talk about it. That is not how the Power Morpher is held. Your fingers never go underneath the thing. It has a handle on the back. It is activated by pressing the button on the right side with the thumb where the hand is on the handle. It's not how it works. This page is an artistic error that has happened before and I'm getting real sick of them letting it slide. Here, look at this picture. Do you see any fingers underneath those morphers? No, from the beginning, the power morpher has always been used with a handle.
I think it really just bugs me because that's not even a good way to hold the Morpher. You see, like, you can't really keep it straight. It kind of wobbles around. If you're thrusting it forward like the Rangers normally morph, it's like you're throwing it at the monster. See there? For a comic series that gets so many of the fine little details so right, this is just a glaring mistake that I just can't get over. Sorry. Get on! No, 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 MPG. You... Shut up. The Rangers get into battle with the statue, Billy even asking them to try and not destroy it. It is kind of a cultural landmark and all. But I wouldn't worry, Billy. The items always go back to normal when they're destroyed. It's part of the spell or something. As the statue blasts them around, Zack and Trini realize that their confidence in Jason has been shaken. Now they're not even sure that they can follow him into battle. Back somewhere over the rainbow, Tommy tells Swordba he knows he's not the best choice, but his friends need him. The sword says they're doomed then. There is no shame in failure, only in hubris. A portal opens and the sword says Zordon is calling him home. But it's not Zordon. It's Lord Zed. The sword is stunned. The planet is supposed to be hidden from evil. Only a handful of even good people know about it. Zed says that he found it thanks to Tommy. Tommy insists that Zed is lying, calling the sword Saba, and interestingly it doesn't protest that name this time, just feeling like it was right the whole time. Zed plays right into this, telling Tommy he can just drop the act, and follow their plan to kill Saba and destroy the tower. Saba attacks Zed, but he's more than a match for him, mocking Saba for being alone. But Saba's not alone. He's got a kitty! Zed's not scared of cats, but the cat is fast enough to hit Zed, slashing his back. Saba tells both Zed and Tommy to leave at once, but Tommy insists he's on Saba's side, and the tiger seems to be standing with him. Zed blasts energy through the temple, then finally explains just how Tommy helped. He'd searched for the Tower of Light for centuries, but never found it. When he drained Tommy's powers, he knew that if he was left alive, Zordon would seek out new powers for Tommy, turning to the white light. So he just waited and followed Tommy there. Saba attacks, but Zed grabs Saba, electrifying him. Unlike Draken, he feels like Saba is more valuable intact. Tommy demands that Zed let Saba go, promising to protect the white light. Zed calls him brave, but misled. Zed doesn't want the white light for himself. In fact, he wants Tommy to have it. Tommy thinks that this is a trick, like Zed can't touch it, so Tommy has to take it first or something. But no, it's actually simpler than that. Zed saw the warrior the evil Green Ranger was, and just as Tommy seemed to indicate to Rita that night at dinner, tells him that he enjoyed doing it and was serving Rita willingly. Tommy denies this, but Zed says, hey, he's not judging. He wants Tommy to embrace the dark side. He's offering Tommy the second chance he just asked Saba for. Take the light, bend it to your will, and become the warrior you were always meant to be. Zed has transformed Saba into a badass looking black saber, offering it to Tommy. This issue feels a little weird. I'm left with a lot of questions. The biggest one being who remembers what and why? Tommy remembers Saba, remembers Draken. That shouldn't be the case, I think. It's just really strange. I feel like the answer could lie somewhere in their first encounter with Draken versus their second encounter with Draken. Except Saba was broken during the second encounter and that was what was supposed to be erased, so I'm just really confused as to what was erased and who remembers what. Some of you are going to call this an overreaction, and I am sorry if you feel that way, but I am deducting half a point for the art issue with the morphers because I just feel like it's a repeat issue that's very easily fixed if you look at the show stills for more than a second. Therefore, issue 26 of GoGo Power Rangers gets a 3.5 out of 5. 
Next time on a comically long review, a solid month of Power Rangers comics comes to an end. Kaya forms her team of anointed to take on the Rangers, and we'll see how that works out for her when I review Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue number 46. That is going to do it for another comically long review. Heroes, thank you so much as always for watching. Down in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this issue and of my review of it. I will open myself to the criticism. What do you think about the whole issue with the hand placement on the morphers? Is that something like me where it really gets under your skin since it keeps on happening and it's such an obvious error? Or is it something that you easily overlook since the art on the page is good and it's really not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things? Let me know down in the comments below. I will say, please try to be respectful. Remember, this is my show and these are my opinions. So you're overblowing it. You're overreacting. I understand that to an extent. Just be a little respectful. That's all I ask. Just let me know about that down in those comments below. And while you're down there, make sure you smack that thumbs up button to let me know that you enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see all of those videos and ring that bell. Get your notifications set up so you'll be notified of whenever I post brand new videos such as these comically long reviews. And if you'd like to lend any financial support to my channel, you can head on over to patreon.com slash videos. Consider becoming one of my patrons. I have a whole list of tiers and what you get back for the various support and I would greatly appreciate that. But if you can't do the monthly thing, you can head on over to ko-fi.com slash videos where you can buy me a coffee and believe it or not, for this video, I have an actual coffee, not an imaginary one. Mmm, that is actually delicious. Those are set at $3 a piece, and I greatly appreciate any support I find at either of those sites. But if you can't do financial support, I totally understand, especially at this time of year, trust me. Just share my videos on social media, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Let people know about the Orange Ranger. I greatly appreciate that as well. That's a main way that the channel grows. Until next time, heroes, may the power protect you. I am, of course, thrilled with all of this Power Ranger for the next five months, by the way. I've mentioned at certain points that, uh, <clears throat> wow, the green dragon coin is Again, why does anyone remember this? The Rangers, damn. The Emissary says that he can knock Zack and bleh, 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 but the Emissary warns that telling them the wrong, wrong <laughs> This page does, uh, crud. This is an issue I've talked about since it's popped up in other issues, and this, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, Billy, I didn't, I hate, like, He'd searched for the Sword of Light. I can't believe it took me that long to call it the Sword of Light. And we'll see how successful she's, I knew, gosh dang it. Next time on a comically long review, a solid, did I call, I, it feels like I didn't call the show the right thing. I probably did.